If you want to follow along, grab your Bible if you haven't already. We're reading 2 Samuel chapter 9. And I did switch Bibles. This is uh, my Bible from a couple years ago. This is last year's Bible. It's the same Bible, but I have to get a new one each year because it starts to fall apart. So hopefully I can do a little bit better holding on to my Bible this time. 2 Samuel chapter 9. David's kindness to Mephibosheth. One day, David asked, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? He summoned a man named Ziba, who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba, the king asked? Yes, sir, I am, Ziba replied. The king then asked him, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Amen. Ziba replied, yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. In Lodiber, Ziba told him, at the home of Maker, son of Emiel. So David sent for him and brought him from Maker's home. His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David said, greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I get so excited about this. I think this is a really great story. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Mephibosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's servant, Ziba, and said, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him to produce food for your master's household. But Mephibosheth, your master, grandson, will eat here at my table. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba replied, Yes, my lord the king, I am your servant, and I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at David's table, like one of the king's own sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah. From then on, all the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate regularly at the king's table. Chapter 10, David defeats the Ammonites. Sometime after this, King Nahash of the Ammonites died and his son Hanan became king. David said, I am going to show loyalty to Hanan just as his father Nahash has always done to me, was always so loyal to me. So David sent ambassadors to express sympathy to Hanan about his father's death. But then when David's ambassadors arrived in the land of Ammon, the Ammonite commander said to Hanan, their master, Do you really think these men are coming here to honor your father? No, David has sent them to spy out the city so they can come in and conquer it. So Hanan seized David's ambassadors and shaved off half of each man's beard, cut off their robes at the buttocks, at the buttocks and sent them back to David in shame. <laughs> When David heard what had happened, he sent messengers to tell them, stay in Jericho until your beards grow out and then come back. For they felt deep shame because of their appearance. Isn't that amazing? And how much more nowadays with social media and everything, people and their embarrassment. When the people of Ammon realized how seriously they had angered David, they sent and hired 20,000 Aramean foot soldiers from the lands of Beth Rehob and Zobah, 1,000 from the king of Mecca, and 12,000 from the land of Tob. When David heard about this, he sent Joab and all his warriors to fight them. The Ammonite troops came out and drew up their battle lines at the entrance of the city gate, while the Arameans from Zobah and Rehob and the men from Tob and Mecca positioned themselves to fight in the open fields. When Joab saw that he would have to fight on both the front and the rear, he chose some of Israel's elite troops and placed them under his personal command to fight the Arameans, Arameans in the fields. He left the rest of the army under the command of his brother Abishai, who was to attack the Ammonites. If the Arameans are too strong for me, then come over and help me, Joab told his brother. 
And if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I will come and help you. Be courageous. Let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. May the Lord's will be done. When Joab and his troops attacked, the Arameans began to run away. And when the Ammonites saw the Arameans running, they ran from Abishai and retreated into the city. After the battle was over, Joab returned to Jerusalem. The Arameans now realized that they were no match for Israel. So when they regrouped, they were joined by additional Aramean troops summoned by Hadad Ezer from the other side of the Euphrates River. These troops arrived at Helam under the command of Shobak, the commander of Hadad Ezer's forces. When David heard what was happening, he mobilized all of Israel, crossed the Jordan River, and led the army to Helam. The Arameans positioned themselves in battle formation and fought against David. But again, the Arameans fled for the from the Israelites. This time, David's forces killed 700 charioteers, and 40,000 foot soldiers, including Shobak, the commander of their army. When all the kings allied with Hadad Ezer saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they surrendered to Israel and became their subjects. After that, the Arameans were afraid to help the Ammonites. So David and Bathsheba will be next. Mercy, mercy. We know that's going to be a good chapter. So I hope you join me for chapter 11 of 2 Samuel. And thank you so much for reading the Bible with me. I hope you are having a very beautiful day. And I'm so glad to be in the word of God with you. Make sure you spend some private time in prayer with the Lord because he loves you and he wants you to cast your cares on the Lord. So make sure you spend some time praying to God and letting him know how great he is because he is great. Thank you and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.